Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Doc. Well, today I have the opportunity to work on a, um, a Shimano. This is a Spyrix. It's the uh, 4000 FG. And I've got a note here that says that it runs stiff. I, I'll agree with that. And that it has no anti-reverse. It's interesting. And it sounds like a cat is trapped in there. So we'll kind of see what's going on with this reel. We're going to take this reel apart. We'll try and service it. Try and figure out what's going on with that anti-reverse. We may or may not be able to completely service this reel. It may need a part. But, uh, well, that's part of uh, reel service. You want to take a reel apart. You want to inspect all the pieces and parts. And, well, if they need a replacement part, you need to... Uh, to go and get that replacement part and uh, wait for that in order to service the reel to completion. Well, we're going to take this reel apart today. We'll show you how it's made. Uh, we'll see if we can identify and fix the issue and uh, get this one back to Doug to take fishing again. Well, if you like these types of videos, if you want to see more of these, I would ask you to subscribe to my channel. And if you do subscribe to my channel, please use the notification button. That'll let you know when I'm posting. And, uh, well, you can take a look and see if that's a, uh, a reel that you'd like to learn more about. Maybe you have one and would like to service it. And it's kind of what this channel is about, teaching you how to do it yourself. Well, the first thing I like to do when I'm testing a reel is take that spool off and do the same thing. Still hearing that rub. And it's not the handle. So there's something going on underneath, and we'll get to that. We want to take the reel apart. We'll start by taking off the exterior pieces and parts. That was one. I'll put that off to the side there. For all of my small pieces and parts, I use a parts tray. The large ones like the handle and the handle screw here and the spool, they're hard to lose. So I just kind of lay them up to my top of my workbench where it's not going to get lost. Next up, I'm going to remove the two spool shims that control the height of the line lay and the little click ratchet. And generally, you can do that just simply by pulling them off. Now, that is one that will go into my parts tray. And my parts tray is, well, in this case, it's the bottom of a fast food container. And I'll put all my pieces and parts in there so that when it's time to reinstall, I'll be able to, well, reinstall them and know where to go with confidence to find them. I'm going to take the whole fast screw off that's holding the rotor nut on. And now I'm going to remove the bottom. Now I didn't find the 4000 FG schematic, but I found one close to it, the 4000 FD. So there may be a couple of differences between them, but this is a guide that's going to tell me how it comes apart so that I kind of sort of know what I'm looking for in, uh, in making this one uh, work again. I really, I, I, quite honestly, I've never heard that. I'm interested to find out what's going on on the other side of that. Well, we're going to take the bump guard off next. That's a little shield here. And typical of Shimano, they've put a little screw in this side here. So when you pull that one thing and it's not coming out, don't try to use brute force. Know that that little screw is under the handle there. And, well, if you don't remove it, you won't get that bump guard out in one piece. And if you break it in two pieces, it's going to be hard to find. And it's going to cost you some extra time. So there's a long and a short screw for that. I'm going to put that in one corner of my basket. Now the two pieces come out. You wanted to get that piece out because there's a third piece here, which are the screws. And one in particular is hiding below. So this rotor and... Uh, assembly is blocking the side case from coming out completely. So the next thing we want to do is remove the rotor by removing this rotor nut. I'm not sure which one that is. You kind of have to play around a little bit with it. It looks to be a 12 millimeter. Let's see if that's the case. It is. And here I think I might be able to, to get the box wrench in on it. And when you can't, well, don't force anything. Just go to a long uh, deep socket. You need to find the 12. There's the 12. Just find a deep socket in your socket wrench. And 
Try the traditional way first. Try to make sure while it does, it comes off in a counterclockwise manner. And the reason I mention that, some, some real manufacturers put these on um, with a reverse screw. In this case, we had the screw tie down, so there was a chance that that wasn't going to be the case. All right, we take that off. Now we can remove this rotor. And it's interesting because I still don't see anything here. Ah, here we go. So we have the drive here for the anti-reverse. It looks like we have one really bent up screw here. That might have had an effect on it. And we should have a spring. Here we have the spring on this one. So I think we may just have to reset this spring. This spring is going to go over here underneath. I don't know how it got where it got to, but uh, that's all good. And we have a spring on this collar here, which is going to control the um, this one. It's going to go in this little slot here. So I think we might be in good condition here with the, the existing pieces and parts. Looks like just a couple of things may have come off. And well, I guess we'll find out. All right, the large part will go over there. The small part will go into my parts tray. And we can continue with this now. There's three Phillips head screws. Now, these screws are kind of interesting the way Shimano sets this up. These three screws are going to come out, but this is the side plate without the screws that is going to be removed. Let's go ahead and take these three out and just keep, it, keep the pressure of your hand on the back side because that's the one that's going to come apart. This, this side plate has got the handle arm on it. It's going to attach to the, the rod. Shimano does that a little bit differently. You'll notice as I'm doing this that I'm laying those screws on my table. And I'm doing that because I want to make sure that the three screws are all the same size. Shimano is one of these manufacturers that has a habit of putting in different size screws. And you want to identify which, the, which screws are the small ones or the long ones or the whatever they might be. Just in case. So that when you go to reinstall, you know where they are. This reel says five ball bearings. That's a nice amount of ball bearings. This has also got the easy cast function where you can use that trip lever to throw the bail as opposed to uh, holding the line. And a lot of people like that kind of a setup. All right, this should come off now. That's all right. That's what I wanted to do. Oh, well, he's still hearing it. Isn't that interesting? We're still hearing that little chirping going on. Let's see if we can get this case off. Something in there is causing it to be tight. I wonder if we'll still hear it. No. Well, so this is a real, either was upgraded. No, it can't be. It's got the five ball bearings. There's a side plate here. And the reason why I started that chain of thinking was there's a side plate here. It's got two notches in it. Might be hard to see, but there's a notch on both sides opposing. And typically those notches hold a, um, a plastic bushing as opposed to a bearing, but this reel's got the bearings in it. I think we probably found out what this problem is. This, this bearing here is frozen on the shaft. All right, let's, uh, let's take the rest of this off, then we'll see if we can get that bearing off. I'm going to squirt that right now. But that bearing is not moving at all, so that's probably why this is so tight. We'll continue. We're going to take the screw out of the crosswind block. That's the Phillips head screw. Mark where it came from. Hold your crosswind block now and remove the axle shaft. That came out nice and easy. So there's no friction with this as being bent or anything. I'm going to wipe that off. We'll put that into our parts tray. And then I can equally get that crosswind block out, put that into my parts tray, and we should be able to remove the main gear now. And I guess they want me to remove this oscillation gear before that happens, so I'll pull that out. And this main gear seems like this one probably doesn't want to cooperate either, so I'm not quite sure why that one's at least turning. This one's not turning at all. And sometimes what you want to do 
just give it a good coat of penetrating oil. Just sort of walk away from it for a moment. There's two, sp uh, two screws that are holding the rest of the assembly on. So let's go ahead and take those out. And we'll see what we can do here about uh, getting this anti-reverse to work again. So this anti-reverse is just a single collar. It always wants to return that arm to that flipping position. So uh, there, there is a override here. This one is clearly stuck because one, the spring was out, and two, this is in the off position, but that arm isn't going anywhere, which usually means dried grease, and I'm seeing it right here on top of the lever. There's a whole bunch of dried grease on it. So my old friend, the can of penetrating oil, is going to just do the same thing here. We'll just let that seep in for a while as we remove the pinion gear assembly. On that pinion gear assembly, you have a flat washer up top and the bearing. And this is a good place to tell you, uh, take pictures along the way. As you're working on these wheels, it might be easy and you might just say, okay, I meant, I'll make a mental note of this. I kind of know what I'm doing here. And then all of a sudden you're stuck. And uh, sometimes that schematic, like I showed you at the beginning of the, the video, will help you. And sometimes it's just not as clear as you would like it to be in terms of the parts orientation or the sequence that you took them off and so on. And well, you'll do yourself a big favor by taking pictures, particularly on the reels that you don't know how to service, so that uh, you can get them back easily and without a lot of anxiety. All right, well, we're going to just check the teeth, which I did while I was brushing them off. They're all clear. They're all uniform. So we're just going to load that up with the uh, fishing reel grease. I'm using pen precision reel grease there. I'm going to oil that bearing. That bearing is working. I'm going to reinstall the bearing. And then there was a flat washer that goes on top of the bearing. I'm going to make sure that my case is clean. I'm going to put this right back into the reel. Because at this point I don't need to do anything more there. The case, as I mentioned, is it's very clean. I guess the issue here is probably that maybe it's too clean, all of the greases and oils having evaporated, and that would be a reason why this reel would be struggling as well. All right, I'm just going to put the two tie down screws in here, and then we'll set that case off to the side for a moment. And we'll just give it a nice turn. I'm not hearing anything at issue there, but let's let's work on this one a little bit. So this one had a bent spring. And this should also be kind of moving a lot better than that. And I'm not quite sure why that is. It's probably dirt. So let's, let's get bold here and take this out. The first thing we want to do is just unhook that spring again. Take a picture here because as you go to remove springs, they kind of get funny. And if you don't know the orientation of it, you're going to be spending a lot of time trying to figure it out. There's a long screw for this one. Wow, that is a long screw. And now let's take that off the post. And let's just make sure we can clean all of this. I'm thinking that maybe, just maybe, this uh, this pop metal dog here has just started to get a little bit of an issue with uh, some corrosion or the like. So I'm going to use a, a micro file and just file that side down. I think that might be what's causing this to operate poorly. And then I have a little round file here somewhere too, if I can find it. Never, never there when you want it. Here it is. I'm just going to run it lightly through that center just to make sure that if anything is bogging that down that we, we take care of that too. Now without putting anything else on, I just want to run this in. See if, see if we can glide across that post. Well it's still a little tight. 
So I'm just going to take that file, I'm just kind of run it on that post for a moment. It could be a swollen post. And, and I'm not, uh, this isn't abrasive at all. This is just to see if there isn't something there that's just holding it on. I'm going to go back to this one and be a little bit more uh, leveraged. It could, it's very possible that there could be a, a burr. Or something that's uh, that's got that working poorly. Try that again. This is an iterative process. You don't want to do too much too soon. Take your time. All right, that's where that's working a lot better now. You can see how that moves. All right, so then what we want to do is set this up with the spring. The spring is going to go over the shoulder in the front. You can see the, the U-shaped hook. That goes over and then align the hole in the spring with the hole in the dog. Let's put all that over. Now we can put that screw back in. And as soon as I do that, I want to put some oil onto that for all that it's going to ride on. Now that should move this along and make that work easier. Yeah, right away I can see that. All right. So what's going to happen now is as it hits the, the piece, you can see it's coming back. And that's what it should be doing. It's probably an easier way to do it. I'll snap back like this. But that's what it should be doing. Okay, looks like we've solved that issue. Got another issue over here, and that's the frozen bearing on that side. Frozen bearing is on both sides. I'm not quite sure what's causing that. You can do this, but do it gently. You don't want to rip up any teeth on the uh, back side here. Just grab a, a little screwdriver from both sides, see if you can't work. Most of the time, these things get stuck on here because the handle has been over tightened. And when it torques down, it uh, flares out the end. And when it flares out the end, it pushes it up. You can see we're, we're getting the separation that we need to remove this one. Just be careful, you don't want to smash the back piece. All right. This one can come off. <laughs> Famous last words, right? It's gonna fight me to the end. But it will come off. All good. We want to clean out the main gear. There wasn't a lot of grease on here. I'd say most of this grease got evaporated. And my guess would be that this hasn't been serviced in a long time. And that's probably why we're looking at what we're looking at. I'm going to puddle up the penetrating oil. I'll take my hard brush and we'll do the same thing here that we did on the pinion gear. I'm going to roll this through. You can see all the dirt and grease in that coming out here. I, I like to pull it onto the paper towel so it doesn't get on my desk and it doesn't just go right back into the gear again. All right, that's that side. We're not sure on this side. What I am sure of is I can place this back into the case. So we'll reseat that uh, bearing just like that. Now I'm going to turn this over, see what we can do, if we can do here. This one, as I mentioned, was frozen on here on the inner race. Never a good thing. I'm going to use a channel lock pliers just to grab it and see if I can turn it. All right, I can turn it. So this is, uh, this is all good. It's not totally frozen, but that would be my guess that this is probably why it's squeaking if nothing else. And I'm using the pliers on the non-tooth side inside here to hold that as I turn the gear. And yeah, if you're trying to turn this reel with that bearing like that, that's the issue, or one of the issues to poor performance. And we're just going to try and uh, resolve that. Well, we're going to do the same thing here that we tried to do with the other one. We'll try to lever that off. And unfortunately, I have to go off camera to do that. I want to put this into a vise. I want to make sure this is padded. I'll probably use 
a kitchen scrubby or something to protect that back end in the vise. And then I'm going to use two uh, screwdrivers to lever that off. So we'll be right back in video time. Quite honestly, that was quick. I, I surprised myself with that. Uh, we just took the two screwdrivers, put them underneath like you saw me do on the other one, and it popped right off. So this, my guess, is what's causing the, uh, the noise. So we have a bearing. Let's test the bearing. Yeah, that bearing is frozen. So that bearing needs a replacement. And, uh, well, we're going to do that in a moment. We'll take a look and see if I can find a replacement bearing. And uh, then we're just going to do the same thing here. I believe that we do have teeth that have been flared. So I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm just going to ride this over the, the shaft. I'm not looking to uh, file anything down, but if there is a high spot there, I will notice it. And again, what happens here, you've got the, the butt end of this handle. When you over tighten it, this little piece here is going to put a lot of pressure on those little teeth there. And eventually what happens is, well, it, uh, it knocks them down or flares it out. And uh, as a result, it puts pressure on it, cones it out, and then you get something like this. All right, we'll do this magic of uh, videos one more time. We're going to see if we can find that replacement bearing. Well, through the magic of video, we've got the bearing. We noticed that we had two shims on there. We had a whole set of shims on there. So manufacturers use these shims to take up the slack in the main gear and prevent it from moving side to side so that it tracks well on the pinion gear and does not cause a grind. If you're replacing a main gear, you want to take your time and you want to check the shims. Sometimes I get questions in the forum that say, I replaced the main gear and now it's running rough. There's a grinding or it's hard to turn or any of a number of things. And, um, well, it's not always that the same amount of shims are going to be required. There are differences in the way that the gears are cut. And there's a reason why some have more shims and some have less. And that's to make up those differences. You'll notice these shim washers are very... Uh, small and thin. That was less than paper thin. I'll right, put that on. Yes, I did find that replacement bearing. I'll go ahead and put that on after I oil it. I oil bearings. I don't uh, grease them. This should just go off. Fits nice and easy. Look at that. It spins beautifully. It's amazing what a new bearing will do. We're lucky. We got lucky on that one. All right, let's rebuild the rest of the reel then. We're going to start by taking that oscillation gear. We want to make sure that that is nice and clean and debris free again. In this case, the reel pretty much was uh, dead dry. So uh, if you notice that there was anything in the teeth, do the same thing we've been doing, which is to take that hard brush and some penetrating oil, use the penetrating oil as a degreaser, and then use that brush to knock out the sediment that's inside. An oscillation gear works all the way around, so make sure you get grease on the back side, in the hole where it's going to ride on the, on the uh, stud, on the face where the crosswind block is going to ride, and on the teeth, which are going to be driven by the small gear in the back. With that in place, make sure that your crosswind block is clear. We'll use a cotton swab to uh, clean out that channel, and we'll uh, put a little bit of grease there. A little bit of grease inside, and we can re redo the channel. This is where a picture helps. I always like to say that a lot of times these are foolproof, but a lot of times they'll fool you as well. Sometimes on a gear like this, it's possible to put it in upside down. Yes, it is. And uh, if you don't know what the orientation is, and you put it in upside down, your reel's not going to work. All right, that's that. The main gear can go back in now. I'm pretty sure with uh, what we've just done here that uh, we shouldn't have an issue with the uh, that noisemaker. Snaps in nicely. I want to roll this down. All 
I wanted to bring that cross line block all the way down so that we can seat the axle shaft. The axle shaft gets a, a very light coat of grease. Don't put a lot on there because when you go through the pinion gear, it's all going to rub off. It's that tight tolerance. Bring it down, flat side faces out. Merge the flat side into your cross line block. Bring the hole down so that it can accept the screw. Then go into your parts tray, get that screw, and finish installing that piece. If you have an issue, like I just have here with that screw falling off, go get a dab of that fishing reel grease. It'll hold it temporarily and help you get it started. So what have we done so far? Complete uh, disassembly of the reel. We worked on that anti-reverse dog up top where the spring was off. We cleaned all of that up. Now we've got a nice functioning, flipping kind of a dog. We noticed that the bearing for the reel was seized. That's probably why it was making noise. It was crying against this case here. Uh, we replaced that. We showed you how to lever that off without injuring the reel. And well, now we're just putting it back together again. Let's take the handle side now, put that on. And interestingly enough, I don't have anything barking at me at the moment. So, all good. Take the three side plate screws that we have and put those back on. And we still got some work to do because that. Uh, that anti-reverse assembly up top, well, that spring and everything was dislocated, but also on the, the single set, it was also dislocated. So we got, got a little bit of work to do to make that right uh, before we go any further. This is an interesting setup. Most of the time, you're going to see this easy cast feature on a rear drag reel. In this case, it has a uh, top loaded drag rather than the rear drag. I guess Shimano wanted to be a little bit of everything to everybody. Okay, I want to set this anti-reverse dog to off. That's so that we can put that assembly on. Here's your assembly. It's got a spring load on it. There's a spring on this collar. Here's your anti-reverse dog ledge right here. And we should be able to just slip all of this over at the moment. And this is where I need to consult the schematic because I may have that upside down. Now I have it right side up. Interesting. Okay, that's the way they say it goes. Let's uh, remove this, turn the pinion gear, and make sure that it, uh, it locks off the way it should. Well, one of the things I noticed is that this is not set properly. That's on me. I want to take this up, take this off. This does belong where it is. And you can see the little tag of that spring. That, so this all sits in the collar like this. But it belongs between these two forks on this side. So let's bring that back. Locate that piece, oops, fell off. Locate that piece between the two forks and then give it a try. Okay, this looks like it'll, it should work. We have the, the tag between these two gold posts here. We have our collar on, we have the spring that's uh, seated in the hole here and wraps around this carrier. And the next thing to do then would be to put the uh, rotor assembly on. We want to put a, a dose of oil on the moving parts of that rotor assembly as well as on the line guide. You do not need to remove the bale if the bale and everything is working. Let's go ahead and put the rotor back on now. And I'll probably get it wrong. There's only two ways that this can go on. One of them is going to result in the rotor landing back here, back on, and I got it right. 
If you find that when you put your rotor on that this quick release is over on this side, simply remove the rotor, turn it 180 degrees, and reinstall it, and you'll have it set correctly. I've gotten fishing reels in from folks that have taken it apart, done the whole service the right way, and sent it to me because, well, they couldn't figure out how it seats over here. Well, it's pretty simple, but that's where you take the pictures, and that's where you, you kind of have to kind of go with the flow. All right. Let's tighten that back down. Try to spin before you do anything. Huh, no, no, no noise. Interesting. All right. Uh, next up, we can kind of grab the piece for the spool, as long as we're over in this direction. Then let's go put the bump guard and the handle and the light on. We have the bottom piece. I believe that goes on first. That jumped out pretty quick on me, so I'm not sure, but I believe that's the way that one goes. And then we want to put the piece on with the small screw that ties down. Make sure all of that fits nicely. Go in your parts tray. Get the long screw that belongs through the handle. And your micro screwdriver. So that you can tie that in place. And then we have one more screw over here. That will be for the bottom bump guard. Do the same. And then before we put the rest of the reel on, we want to make sure that we go over here and service the top drags. And uh, well, this is kind of confirming sort of what we already know, that this reel has not been serviced in a while. You can see the large amount of dirt and debris under there. Well, why does that happen? This is a top drag, and this, the line rubs on the edges as it comes in, and that line's wet. When it throws water off, it goes under the adjuster and onto the drag washers. So these need to be serviced and kept clean to be for maximum performance. And uh, that's what we'll do right now. There's a five-sided spring clip in here. You want to insert a screwdriver or another implement under there. This is a spring. It will shoot. So please guard it and understand that well, you need to take the time and take care. Otherwise, you'll be looking for that spring. These have felt drag washers in them. Felt washers get oiled to, kept, to be kept flexible. But first we want to get that dirt and debris out of that channel. Some of that is the felt that's worn down. Interesting. Alright, clean that up. And then we're going to take the drag washers and reinstall on that. This is a typical six drag washer set. You have three uh, felt washers, you have three metals. You start with a felt washer, then the first of what's called the keyed washers, that's got the rectangular center. Second felt washer, and then the middle one is the eared washer, it's got the two points. And the top one again is a keyed washer. Well this is sort of rinse and repeat. We're going to put the felt washer in, give it a healthy drink of oil, put the first of the keyed washers in. Second goes in now, and we'll do the same thing, a healthy amount of oil on there. Then the keyed washer goes in the two slots in that spool. Top one goes on. Again, a good amount of fishing wheel oil. Then our top keyed washer. And then find the spring, find the, the groove in the spool, insert one side, walk it around. This time, this one's not a very high pressure spring, but make sure that they're in the grooves. That's a retention clip. And go ahead and put that on. And then we can put our drag adjuster button on. And we'll give it a test. Put the handle on, see how we did. Right, quite an effort on this one. All right, the handle goes on, held on by the handle screw on the other side, and as a word of caution, do not over tighten. You saw what happened when we got this over tightened before, it peened on that uh, 
bearing. All right, nice and tight. Let's give it a turn. Well, there you go. That's running a whole lot easier than when we started. And, uh, well, we have that anti-reverse, don't we? Here we go. It's back to the anti-reverse position. So the cause of this one, as we found out, was a frozen burring on the main gear. And that frozen burring made it very hard to turn because what you were hearing was that burring kind of uh, running up against the side plate causing that noise. Well, that's not the case now. And uh, this reel's ready to go fishing again. Again, when you're fishing this, it's an easy bail trip. You pull back with your forefinger. You don't have to touch the line in order to, uh, to cast the reel. You simply, when you're casting, you simply have control of that. When you're in the arc of your cast, you're throwing this way. About 11 o'clock, you, you pull back. My hands are greasy. You pull back on that switch that releases the line and lets you cast it very much like a closed face casting reel. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you did, please like it. Again, if you like these types of videos, please subscribe. To our first responders and essential personnel, our fire, our police, our first aid workers and the like, thank you for all that you do to keep us safe. To everyone, I hope you enjoy keeping your reels serviced and repaired and uh, ready to go fishing. Make sure that uh, they are well maintained, oiled and cleaned on an annual basis and uh, that uh, you'll be rewarded for that with uh, many years of fishing that's uninterrupted uh, by, uh, well, having downtime because the reel doesn't work. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.